friends, I am indeed happy to welcome you to the second Friday, second Saturday lecture series at Ayutha. I think something like 25 years this series has gone on and it is always a pleasure to talk to school children <coughs> and I hope you will ask some questions at the end and in case I can't answer them or if there is not enough time, you can always send me an email and uh, in that way uh, continue your question. <coughs> also, uh, I am not keeping very good health, so in case uh, I cannot go on halfway through the lecture, you, you know in a cricket match if a fielder is uh, hurt, uh, a second fielder can take its place. So I am expecting to uh, submit to play the role of uh, substitute fielder, substitute speaker uh, for this uh, talk. Anyway, let's hope that doesn't happen. So, what I am going to talk about are uh, some uh, aspects of heavenly bodies which uh, collide in space. Now, when you look at the night star, you see stars here, here and there, and then in between there is dark space. So you think that the space is kind of uh, very sparsely populated, and therefore there can't be any collisions of two objects in space. But that doesn't happen. And we will see today that the uh, collisions which happen in a big city crowd, uh, that kind of collision can also happen in, uh, in space and it can happen at very different levels. So, uh, we can uh, see how, how that can happen. <coughs> can we sustain collisions uh, in, in the space which is all around us and how big are the collisions likely to be? <coughs> so let us look at this. Uh, so can we have collisions? The answer I am giving you in advance. Yes. And we will see some examples of colliding objects. And we will start uh, on the level of, if you see, galaxies which are collections of stars, uh, or like our Milky Way is a collection of stars. And you see here, you define a galaxy as a system of stars and interstellar matter that make up the universe. And you can have uh, something like 100 billion stars in a galaxy. So if a galaxy can be very large. Here you see uh, <coughs> a galaxy which is very familiar to us because we are in it. This is the uh, what you call so this uh, spiral uh, structure uh, is made up of stars actually. All, all this thing that you are seeing in starlight. Uh, it's uh, going through this bright thing and whenever there is darkness, it could be because not always because there are no stars, <coughs> but because there are uh, absorbing matter, pieces of absorbing matter, that is light cannot go through. 
and that part because of absorption and therefore you see uh, darkness. So uh, we can ask can our galaxy, uh, and there, and our galaxy is not the only one, there are many other galaxies that we see, so we can <coughs> look at uh, some galaxies which are well known. Here you see the galaxy called uh, Stefan's Quintet. Now this Quintet means five, a group of five. So they go around each other uh, in a close group and uh, maybe sometimes they come so close that they collide. So uh, this is another example. Uh, you see here a galaxy um, with, with a long tail on this side and another galaxy coming from the other direction. Here it is and they are colliding. <coughs> so uh, this is an example of colliding galaxy. You see here that when the galaxies collide, uh, they are made up of stars. So these two stars, the uh, sets of stars, they go through each other. Now I can give you an example now that we are in the rainy season. Uh, if you go to a place like Lonavla where there is a lot of cloud, uh, you see two clouds going through each other. And that is something like what is happening here uh, for galaxies on the of course much larger scale. So, we, we, this is another example. The names are given below NGC 325956 in Bela. Now, many astronomical objects are uh, labeled by some catalog number. So, NGC is new, uh, L for uh, new and galaxy catalog, something like that. So we have such galaxies. Here you see a lot of examples uh, put together. Uh, you see that there is no unique way in which galaxies can collide. They can take various shapes and forms. Now we come to a, a collision which might be relevant to us. This is the galaxy Andromeda, which is our nearest neighbor. And if you look at the way this galaxy is moving, uh, astronomically you can measure the speed of a galaxy coming towards you or going away from you with the help of spectroscopy. And there is an effect called Doppler effect, which helps you to measure the speed as well as direction of uh, motion of the galaxy. So here what we are finding can be observation is that uh, Andromeda, which is a galaxy similar to ours, we are looking at it from our point. And what we find to maybe to our disturbance uh, is that these galaxies are, this galaxy is coming towards us. That means it's going to collide if you actually follow it. So, it's a collision above in the slide, collision scenario for Milky Way and Andromeda Galaxy encounter. So, sooner or later, they, they are going to collide. Now, you might be worried as to whether they will collide today or tomorrow. So it is not that urgent. Uh, it may take millions of years before the collision actually happens. And uh, uh, of course, it, it will be catastrophic when that does, does happen. But we don't need to worry about it right now. So <coughs> here you see, Andromeda Galaxy and Milky Way. Uh, uh, so this is Milky Way and this is 
Andromeda and they are uh, in moving in a, uh, our galaxy also moves relative to Andromeda and so it will collide. Some more examples. So we, now what I will do, uh, with, I will come down in the size and from galaxy uh, I have come to individual stars. You remember I had said that there are uh, 100 billion stars uh, in a galaxy. So now we are going to a smaller level of uh, kind of a phenomenon of collision, uh, which you see here, uh, system, uh, the most common one is what is called binary star. Now what, what do binary stars do? Binary stars go around each other. Binary means two, group of two. So they go around each other and when they go around each other, they radiate gravity waves. This has now been confirmed. And when gravity waves are radiated by binary system, what will happen is that since it is losing energy, the stars will start to come closer and closer. That binary system gets smaller and smaller because it is losing energy. And it may happen, it will wait long enough, if the stars coalesce. That means they hit each other and that's a collision and they merge into one. This can happen. So here you see binary star collisions, they are going around each other and uh, supposed to be coming closer and closer. Now, how can I stop this? Okay. So we see here, uh, uh, this is, uh, sorry, what I showed was two stars going around each other. Now recently, uh, this kind of uh, binary system has got uh, a very striking example which uh, astronomers have never seen before. What happens is the following. See, when you take two stars going around each other, supposing one star is uh, a black hole. That means you cannot see it, but it exerts its attractive force on the neighbor, the second star. So you will see only one star going round, and you will wonder where does this star learn to go round? Because Newton's law of motion tells us first law says if there is no force acting on it, a uh, body will continue to move in a straight line with uniform motion. So if we are seeing one star only, we expect it to move straight uh, in a straight line with uniform motion. So uh, what we are seeing is it's going around in circle. That means there must be some force on it. And that force is, uh, we deduce that it was uh, exerted by a companion star. And that companion star we cannot see because it is a black hole. Now what was, the black holes have been seen that way, seen in inverted commas, where we cannot actually see it, but we can know that it exists there. So that kind of uh, <coughs> example tells you that you know there is a black hole because you see a visible companion which is going round. Now, supposing you have two black holes going around each other. How do you, how would you know there is a black hole? Because there is no effect on the companion. Companion is also a black hole, so you can't see. So how do you see, uh, how do you know that such thing is there? So the answer to that is that instead of light wave, if you look at gravity wave, then when two black holes going around each other collide, they will radiate the gravity waves and such waves have been seen and from that we deduce that there are two black holes 
in space. Okay, well, let's go further. <coughs> so now we come to uh, even nearby objects. And nearby, I think in relative terms, that is in our solar system. So, what is the likelihood of the Earth being hit by uh, a, uh, another body uh, in the solar system? Uh, that is the question uh, one could ask uh, in, in general. Having seen examples of uh, galaxies colliding, stars colliding, now we are on an even smaller scale, planets colliding or something else colliding in our solar system. Is it possible, is it likely, that is the question. And the solar system, if you examine, what does it have? Uh, it has of course the sun, which is the master of the whole solar system, controls their motion by gravity and uh, then we have uh, planets which go around the sun. You see here some planets and we can go further. Planets have satellites going around each other, uh, going around the planets and some of them are named here. This is not the whole list but some important ones. Then we have asteroids, which you see uh, are of special interest to us as we will discover today. Uh, the situation is that you have here the, the Sun and then various uh, planets going around starting with Mercury, then Venus, then, then the Earth, etc. But you find that after uh, Mars uh, and before, before uh, Jupiter, uh, you, you have these bits of very, very small pieces relatively compared to planetary sizes. But you can say this, this was trying to become a planet but could not become a planet, so it remains part of a whole distribution of uh, smaller particle. So these are called asteroids and uh, then we can go further. Uh, we can have comets. Uh, asteroids stay relatively nearby uh, in our solar system. Comets come from very far away. As you see here, a comet is uh, shown uh, and that comet will come from very far away. It's still attracted by the sun, goes around the sun and then goes away uh, back into large long distance. So that is another body. Then there are smaller pieces like this you see, pieces of stone which are called meteorites and <coughs> one can ask <coughs> this question. Uh, now that you have seen what solar system is made of, roughly, uh, you can ask this question, uh, which is, in uh, particular, can this earth be hit by any of the objects that we saw in the uh, previous uh, list? And let me remind you, you see here, the solar system has the sun, sun of course stays where it is and we uh, quietly go around it. So we have nothing much to fear from the sun. Uh, there is the question of planets. Planets have their own uh, roots and they seem to be following them without any great disturbance. So planets are not going to collide. Uh, what could happen by the way if some other star which is very far away eventually comes in the neighborhood of the sun and like the uh, uh, collision we saw earlier you could have this star colliding with the sun or going very close to the sun then <coughs> that star either times himself or with all the uh, planets it also has brought 
those two bits will collide and a lot of things can happen. But there, there is no specific example yet, so we can forget this and move further. So let's uh, go to this question, can Earth be hit by any of them? So uh, as I said, there is no problem from planets on the star, sun, uh, but that is sun, planets and satellites. They, they are relatively fast and moving very quietly. But there are problems from the other objects in the list. They were asteroids, meteorites and uh, comets. So if you take these uh, objects, they are smaller in size but there are more of them and some of them uh, could come very close to us. So there is a chance of collision. So there, there was the example of collision that we saw in 1994, uh, I think most of the audience would not have been uh, born at that time, but uh, some of us were, and uh, here you see 1994 July, uh, for a comet uh, called Shoemaker maybe, we may collide uh, with Jupiter in thousand years, that is a, a, a typical comet will collide uh, against Jupiter in uh, once in thousand years. Why does it do that? Imagine the comet is coming from very far away and when it comes close to Jupiter, which is very massive star, uh, planet, its gravity is strong enough to pull it towards itself. And so that planet, uh, that uh, uh, comet might fall on the Jupiter. This is what happened uh, with Shoemaker Levy and you saw, see a picture, people knew when this was going to happen because the speeds were all well determined by astronomers and once you know the speeds, then you can do a mathematical calculation using computers to tell you when and where, where that collision will happen. So this thing had happened in July 1994 as per prediction. This is what I want to say. <coughs> so uh, we can ask who, that if the Ju Jupiter attracts uh, these comets, why can't uh, the Earth, Earth attract do that? So the answer to that question is that the Earth is not massive enough. So its gravitational pull is not so strong as uh, of Jupiter. And therefore, uh, fortunately one could say, uh, the collision with the Earth, like the Shoemaker and Levy collided on, the, on Jupiter, that will not happen once in thousand years, but it may happen once in a million years. So you need to have that comet come close to where this uh, earth is located. So if you take this earth here, comet is coming close to it, then it might be attracted. But if it is coming going far away, then the earth effect is not very large. But if there were Jupiter there, Jupiter would have attracted to comet. So here uh, you have the problem that uh, th there are certain objects which are uh, smaller in size which could collide with, with the earth and therefore we have to worry about them. So it says here impact of a comet may have killed uh, life on the earth uh, like the dinosaur. So there is a mystery which has not been solved uh, completely, uh, but there, were, uh, there was a whole population of dinosaurs on the earth and today you see no dinosaurs, but you see uh, skeletons of dinosaurs and you therefore know that they did exist. So what happened to them? Why did they not survive? 
So the answer has been that uh, something came from the sky and uh, uh, it hit the earth and when it hit the earth, it produced lot of disturbance, uh, it produced combustion and when there is combustion, oxygen is used as you know. So if oxygen is not used up, uh, there is not left, nothing left for the uh, dinosaurs or whoever was living on the earth at that time. And so that is what may have happened. So uh, the question was, uh, is, is it likely that any comet will hit the earth? We would like to know that. And the answer to that is, the comet uh, should settle. Now, uh, you, all these names that you see here, uh, Shoemaker, Levis, uh, Swift, Tuttle, etc. You may be wondering where these names come from. The answer is, if you discover a new comet which has not been seen before, then the comet can be, can the comet is given your name, the discoverer's name. So sometimes two people discover independently, so this fifth tattoo might have come like that, Shoemaker, Levy, was similar like that. <coughs> so the most uh, we can ask about, what about fifth tattoo comet? So first calculation showed a few years ago that this uh, comet is going to hit the earth sometime in the future. Uh, I think it is uh, uh, given somewhere. Let's see. Uh, uh, you see, it passed us safely in 1992, but at the time when it passed us, people said, let us know when it is next coming. Because it comet go around the sun, so they keep coming again and again. <coughs> okay. And they, they discovered <coughs> that uh, the uh, comet will come again uh, about 200 years later uh, on 14th of August. So, uh, one could say yes, in the year 2126. This is what our calculation shows. Now, what would you, would you call this? Uh, phenomenon. Uh, do you, you can say that if, if the comet is going to strike the earth, uh, we are all finished, like we can find a dinosaur question. So, uh, one route is to say there is no future beyond 2126. And, and this is what many alarmist people say. That there was some similar thing which said about two or three years back that uh, the earth will be ending by some catastrophe and it didn't happen. So, uh, that the other possibility is that this calculation is based on motion of objects under law of gravitation. But there is there are little forces like friction uh, which also produce some effect although not very large. So if you imagine that this is the uh, comet coming like this and here is the earth and you are going to hit it, that small force might alter your calculation and the comet may go close by and go safely away. So uh, how far these friction forces will be important, this will be decided uh, closer to the time when the comet is uh, again seen. So, and we can, we need not get uh, uh, alarmed by uh, this particular uh, situation. The third uh, reaction would be, supposing you know that the comet is going to hit you, how are you going to save yourself? Now, dinosaurs uh, did not have the technology to uh, boast about, but we uh, are more technologically more advanced. So can we save our Earth from 
Thank you from this uh, comment. <coughs> now, so a few years ago, I had written a science fiction story uh, about a comet which was seen by an Indian observer and uh, that comet was subsequently followed up by various scientists and they found that the comet was going to hit the earth. So how did they save themselves? So this, and that method can be used uh, a real, a real, in a realistic manner. If you send a spacecraft with a nuclear device uh, towards the coming comet, now it would be silly on your part to fire that nuclear bomb on the comet. Say, yeah, in coming year I want to destroy. Because that nuclear bomb will uh, break the comet into little pieces. But those pieces will keep coming to us. Because the momentum, uh, when it was coming fast, that has not been destroyed by the collision. And therefore, what will happen is that you will get a shower of you know, very uh, sharp stones and that will also be the end of uh, the earth. So, what do you do? You fi fire this uh, space vehicle to go very close to the comet and then you produce a uh, shock wave nearby and that shock wave uh, is a kind of change of pressure and so forth. Uh, you then produce an explosion around it, but not on the uh, comet. So that will push the comet slightly to one side. And when it pushes it, uh, the comet will change its direct, uh, the direction very slightly, but that is enough to go close to the earth. So now what, and, and but save the earth. I, I can give you an example, when you are crossing a road and a car suddenly comes and uh, so you have to do some, some maneuvering, so you move slightly to one side and the car goes slightly away. So this is possible, if we are, what we are doing is, uh, what is coming to hit the earth, we are trying to change its direction slightly. So this will be uh, a possible situation uh, to worry about in future. Now let us do So uh, this question is, uh, sizes matter. What is you? Uh, it would depend on what size it has. And one can uh, say that various things can happen. Now here is a heavenly body to uh, against here a, a, a big city. A, a, a big city is like this and this stone is so big that it is more or less covering the whole big city. So this is the kind of uh, thing we have to worry about. So uh, here, are, here you see previous impacts of stones like the one I showed earlier. They are called meteorites, meteors, uh, that is they are hitting the earth. And you see here, this is the uh, meteor crater uh, in Arizona, which big hole that has been uh, made uh, is because some, some big stone hit it. So, of course, that produced lot of local disturbance and took away a lot of life. So it was not enough to uh, kind of uh, destroy the whole earth, life on the earth. So we can ask, do we have any other example? And this is the one in India. If you have not been, uh, you should go and see. Uh, this is the lunar crater. Uh, which here. Uh, again, it is almost circular and the stone must have come like this, hit it and uh, it was made of various minerals which melted because of the heat generated and that minerals, those got mixed with the underground water 
and so this particular composition of this water in this crater is different from any other normal water uh, reservoir in the neighborhood. Even. So uh, people have used this lonar to estimate what was this meteorite which was hitting, uh, which caused the, uh, this uh, lonar hole. Uh, 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 we can say that it was the stone was weighing some 20 million tons. Now you work out 20 million tons of what kind of volume it will have. Uh, and uh, this came about 50,000 years ago. So this impact happened today. And this is the Buldana district of Maharashtra, Lona district. So it is not very far in one week to go to uh, Ajanta and Elora for sightseeing. Uh, you should ask uh, your parents to uh, have one more day and go to Lonar from there. You can make a day trip to Lonar and see this uh, uh, spectacular place which has been created by this impact from the uh, storm. So how much energy was consumed by Lonar impact? We can do a calculation that the Hiroshima bomb you remember the first atom bomb released on energy, released an energy of 13 kilotons of TNT, that is the uh, local explosive unit. The lunar impact uh, will have released around 6 megatons. So you see here, this was 13 kilotons and here we are talking of 6 megatons. Uh, that much, uh, so it is about 500 times the Hiroshima bomb. So you can see uh, how powerful that impact must have been. And you see here, this is, this is the Hiroshima output. Uh, so that kind of thing we have to keep in mind. So an impact of this order can destroy local life but also jeopardize other parts of the earth as a lot of oxygen is consumed in combustion process and uh, wood and hull uh, the, uh, the danger. So uh, we can say what about asteroids? Now meteorites are relatively smaller. Asteroids can be bigger and one can see that there are a possible dangers. So what people are doing, uh, they are uh, mapping uh, all the asteroids uh, as they are moving uh, near the, going past the earth and going round the sun. The advantage of this is that if you know for each stone, uh, each asteroid, uh, where and how it is moving, then they can, uh, uh, we, we can be certain that so these asteroids are harmless, but a particular one might show indication that it might hit us. So that is where the advantage of keeping a complete record of asteroids is important. So uh, astronomers are now engaged in searching for tracking and studying uh, every possible near Earth asteroid so that we keep for the future. So 30th June uh, was the asteroid day for this purpose to remind us of the importance of asteroids and uh, this project looks uh, for major asteroid trajectory and provides details on the possible collision as I told you just now. So this, uh, this is the kind of telescope which is looked and used for to, uh, looking for asteroids only. So, uh, this is um, part of NASA's defense uh, program and uh, you, you see here that a lot of work is being put in and people sometimes ask to astronomers take 
make observations of the sky they are so relevant to what is going on the earth. So why do we worry about it? So I am telling you this is an example which shows that it is very important to know what is in the sky and how they are moving because it is necessary for our survival. So, so to conclude, one can make this particular comment. In, in general, astronomy will give you instances which you don't come across on the earth. So be prepared for a very, uh, what I would call, unusual surroundings and an unusual finding when you do cosmic research. Thank you very much. I will stop here and if you have any questions, quickly, you can try. Okay. Uh, my name is Srinath and I am from New English Medium Secondary School. Uh, okay. Uh, I just wanted to ask a question that what is the composition of a comet or an asteroid? You see, uh, like planets have different compositions depending on the distances from the sun. Uh, you find that asteroids will also have minerals of different kinds depending on their very close to the uh, orbit or whether they are, they are going very fast. So, so I don't think there is a unique form for me. But you need to uh, examine each asteroid for its own uh, composition. Good morning, sir. Uh, my name is Aditi Sambari and I'm from uh, SPM English Medium School. Uh, I just wanted to ask that, does the collision of meteors, comet or asteroids uh, have a severe effect on other objects in the solar system? The solar system has different, uh, uh, what I would say, uh, different uh, uh, problems depending on where you are in the solar system. So, uh, as you saw, the uh, comet uh, hit, uh, hit Jupiter. So, Jupiter has the problem of attracting, I mean, it, it problem arises because it attracts uh, all these comets and therefore it, it suffers collisions. Uh, fortunately, it is very big, so these collisions are not very dangerous for Jupiter. For, Jupiter. for the Earth, the answer is different. If you went to Mercury, which is even smaller, then you will have further different problems. So, if you would like to look at it planet by planet. I am Rita Kulte from Adelgold School. So, I wanted to ask you when the substance comes in our environment, usually it burns off. But why is it from the case of meteorites? You see, uh, certainly some, some bits which come down, uh, and as we know, they, they get very heated because of friction in the atmosphere and because of large uh, temperature, some of them this, uh, melt or, or, or burn now. So it would depend on the size of the stone. If the stone is very big, then although surface-wise, it might have what we call burning or heating, it is big enough to survive that. So, uh, the meteorites uh, that we are talking about for donor or this thing, they were too big here, so I guess they can't protect us from those. When we see comets, comets have a take. They burn due to the reaction with sun. So when uh, comets go farther from the sun, do they have uh, tails? See, normally, when a comet is made of frozen material. When it comes near the sun, it, because of the heat, it, that frozen surface part, uh, it becomes uh, uh, sort of gaseous. Uh, and the, the pressure of the sun's uh, 
solar wind and as well as the solar radiation pressure. They push the tail away from the sun. So when the comet comes uh, like this, the sun is pushing its tail back, the tail is behind. But when it goes around the sun and it comes goes returning, then you see that its tail is on the wrong side. But in the river. Uh, because the sun's pressure is still there, so it is pushing it in this way. But the, the comet has gone like this, so the tail was at the back. So you can see exactly the same Hello sir, I am from Hadivita Bhavan. I want to ask that uh, when uh, some objects are sunk by black holes, uh, what happens to that object? Okay. Uh, normally, a black hole uh, is expected in uh, in the cosmos to be uh, about at least four five times the solar mass. Because it, uh, in order to become black hole, it needs strong gravity and pulling cells together. So the mass has to be large. So when the sun falls uh, or goes, uh, hits the black hole. The black hole will uh, attract it and the sun can't go out again, so it is uh, part of the black hole. It will go on increasing the mass of the black hole. So, that's it. As the asteroids uh, destruct or the destruction is placed, uh, when asteroids are collided with Earth, does the sun have uh, like effect of having such effect on the sun? When asteroids are meteors collided with it? Asteroids uh, impacting the sun. The sun is much more massive, so uh, there is not going to be much effect. So uh, something very small uh, hitting the sun won't uh, change anything. Good morning, I'm Neha from Vikram Bhattar School. Uh, my question is, what happens to the meteorite or the asteroid uh, which collides with the Earth to form a crater like the uh, one in Lonar? See, when the meteor hits the Earth, uh, first of all it has come with a big, big momentum. So that meteor will try to penetrate the Earth, but will come to a rest. When it comes to a rest, uh, it will have already dug a Hole or the dug a kind of this crater. So what happens is that in the process, the impact has generated lot of heat, and when that heat is uh, acting on that same meteorite, it will melt all its comp compositions, all the metals or minerals. Uh, because the heat is tremendous and so it will uh, become liquefied and when it becomes liquefied it gets mixed up with water in the on the uh, side from below uh, the, uh, uh, it doesn't gone where the heat and therefore that will produce this effect that is important.